Welcome to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Close the night before Christmas, and all along the beach, nobody's here, because it's freaking winter in Florida. Stacy. Max, wake up, Santa Claus I'm is here. I'm getting a sun tan. Open your eyes, I haven't seen your eyes oh, at all. Hello. Wow, this really is Florida. Well, we're in Florida. We don't need a winter coat. That's why we're not in London. I need sunglasses while I'm here. This is my this is my Christmas gift to you. Trump rally has punished doubters as the stock market roars to all-time highs. Trump's election has resulted in more than two trillion dollars jump in the value of global equities over the past 30 days, according to Bloomberg. Consequently, that is about the size of the losses bond investors, like those in the U.S. 10-year Treasury notes, have suffered over that period. We have a two trillion dollar gift to stock market investors, a $2 trillion bag of coal for bond market investors. Yes, bond market holds? investors have gotten the bag of coal this Christmas. And the, 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 the stock people got all the goodies, all the cookies and milk from Santa Claus. But yeah, it's a roughly equivalent $2 trillion, which makes sense. I mean, money rotates around the markets and it goes from sector to sector, from industry to industry, from stock market to bond market. And uh, going forward, I think that we're going to see a rotation uh, into precious metals in 2017, just to be a bit contrarian, but I think that's what we'll see in Christmas 2017. Well, this, of course, is a Christmas episode, so we're looking at the year past, the Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas past. We will do, be doing a New Year's Eve special where we look at predictions for 2017, but that's coming up in a week. We'll also be in Florida. It'll still be warm, hopefully. We expect that day. But in terms of the looking at the past, this past year that was 2016, of course, we saw Donald Trump elected, and this continues to be the big story. Um, and if you're seeing us, of course, again, reminder, that means there was not a coup. Well, before <laughs> I forget, uh, if you're interested in an interesting YouTube, there's Bing Crosby and David Bowie singing Little Drummer Boy. Uh, as, uh, you know, David Bowie passed away, of course, talking about 2016. It's a fitting tribute this Christmas, this, this, this Christmas Eve. Okay, well, let's go back to markets, finance, and scandal, and the stories about the markets. And we're talking about uh, Trump rally has punished doubters. Those were the bad, the naughty boys, the naughty investors, the naughty girls, the naughty investors that uh, did not have faith in this uh, market rally. And we're talking about that. And I'm going to move from just the overall market to a particular portion of the market mm -hmm. rise that is important to understand. It's a transport index. And the transport index, if that's rising, um, then of course it means that people really have faith that the, in not just a speculative little bubble, but that there's something really solid behind this and that there could be growth in the future. And here's the chart, and that is the Dow Jones transport average soared to its first intraday record of 9,383.65 to finish at a record 9,371.61, marking its first all time high in more than two years. So this is a higher high, which is always a technical indicator of good times well, coming. This is uh, Dow theory, uh, pioneered by Richard Russell, I believe, came up with this. The, uh, it's the transport index confirmation of a new high in the Dow, uh, which would suggest that the rally is widespread and has a good, good support. Uh, the third index that one looks at, of course, is the utility index. Uh, with rising interest rates, though, I, I, I haven't seen it, but I doubt the utility index is doing as well. But to see the transport index confirm the Dow high, yes, that, that indicates strength, bullishness. Well, it could be, everybody could be cheering and celebrating this Christmas. They could be like, woohoo, my stock portfolio has done so well. This is good times. Let's get out and dance and boogie, put on our flapper gear. But I bring up flapper because, of course, the 1920s, we saw the flappers and the headline reads, Trump rally could mark biggest post-election stock market rise since Hoover. Of course, it did then hit uh, all-time highs after this headline. So it is the biggest, fastest stock market rise, the fastest thousand-point move in, uh, since Hoover. And of course, uh, Hoover, Herbert Hoover, for those who don't uh, recall, who aren't old enough, he was elected in 1928. What happened in 1929? Yeah, the big crash. But let me give a shout out to my man, Josh Brown, reform broker on Twitter. You know, after the financial crisis of 2008, Dow Jones was 
above 10,000, close to 15,000, it crashed down to the 9,000 level or so. And he became very bullish, and uh, he's been riding this market from 9,000 up to 20,000. So there have been some outstanding pundits out there. Josh Brown, the reform broker uh, on Twitter, has definitely been riding this wave, and a big congratulations to him. Well, let's uh, look at another online broker, well, an online blogger, Yardani, analyst. In this article, this is a fantastic quote. I think it's a good quote. It's my gift to you, the audience, for on this Christmas Eve day, if you're celebrating it. I know half the people in the world, well, at least half the people, probably like 75% of the people in the world don't celebrate Christmas. So if you're watching this in Asia or Middle East or I don't know, somewhere in Orthodox Christianity, uh, this won't make sense. But if, if, if you were to be celebrating Christmas, we are all in a Trump world now, said Yardani, uh, they, their analysts. Trump world either is door number one, a new and wonderful reality show that includes all of us as willing or unwilling participants, or else it is door number two, just a remarkable fantasy show, or door number three, something in between. Yardani said he has drank the Kool-Aid and is rooting for door number one. So rooting for the uh, Kool-Aid, drinking the Kool-Aid. Well, every, every, they, they flip the etch sketch upside down, give it a good shake and start all over again. Yardini, as well as every financial pundit, except for maybe a, a very small minority, have been completely wrong every step of the way for the past six months to two years. And uh, I mean, that's uh, an admission of having absolutely no idea what to expect and having been completely wrong uh, for, for years now. I mean, markets are designed to take as much money away from as many people as possible. <laughs> that's the function of a stock market. Why, why, are, why are they designed like that? The capital that fuels capitalism comes from the losers. When you lose money, it goes to the, into the pockets of an entrepreneur that knows what the frick they're doing. Now, <laughs> or you, they're just lucky, or they're just lucky. Well, um, the fact is you need capital to lubricate capitalism. And a lot of times, if there's no credit available, it comes from people losing money. Uh, and that's part of the dynamic that propels free market entrepreneurialism and uh, so you take solace in that it's not just a tax loss you're funding an entrepreneur so another thing at this end of 2016 beginning of 2017 we do see a lot of people in America mostly in the uh, progressive or liberal class or the beltway class the media are of course feeling like they've had a big bag of coal and everybody's kind of uh, upset and sad and all that sort of stuff but I want to look at another sort of change that we've seen this past year, and that is a new foreign policy, really. We're going to see somebody who uh, speaks softly, carries a big stick sort of a concept, um, but he's applying it. Trump could be applying it to the actual de domestic market. So you could see, you see him carrying a big stick toward uh, corporations. And I want to look at this headline from just like a week ago or so when he was meeting with the CEO of IBM, and right before she went to go meet him at Trump Tower, here's the headline, ahead of Trump meeting, IBM says it will hire 25,000 in the U.S. IBM chief executive Gina Rometty said she plans to hire about 25,000 people in the U.S. and invest $1 billion over the next four years, laying out her vision, filling technology jobs in America on the eve of a meeting of industry leaders with President-elect Trump. So I remember there were all those industry uh, tech leaders. Yeah. Okay. Well, you mentioned at the top the bond market, stock market, roughly $2 trillion gain versus a $2 trillion loss. Okay. If Trump's going to have the pendulum of capital swing away from CEOs toward labor, uh, then you're going to see higher wages for labor, manufacturing, et cetera, and less in the pockets of CEOs. So, I mean, that's where it's got to come from. And I think uh, the IBM CEO is being proactive and figuring, you know, let me get on board with this now so that when it comes time for him to swing the big axe and do the Teddy Roosevelt de defunding of oligopolists, you know, I want to keep my head. So that seems like a smart move on the head of IBM. The, the people full of sour grapes are like, oh, they were, uh, IBM was probably going to have 25,000 new jobs anyway, and these people are just uh, like using these announcements to hope that uh, Trump doesn't carry a big stick against them. And they're also quite negative about the 1,000 jobs saved, close to 1,000 jobs saved at Carrier. Um, they did lose another 1,000 jobs. 
but they did save a thousand jobs. And they're also negative about the 50,000 jobs being created by SoftBank with their huge investment. But you know, the fact is, right now there are several thousand people quite happy that uh, you know these corporations are going to stay in America or create jobs in America because IBM, of course, has been a big uh, outsourcer over the last few, uh, the last decade or so. I mean, the biggest Raspberry Award of the year has got to go to Paul Krugman of the New York Times who became a conspiracy theory lunatic. He, he became the biggest idiot on the New York Times editorial board, even out idiocracizing Thomas Friedman, who was holding that position for years as writing the most inane, obtuse nonsense imaginable. Uh, Paul Krugman, congratulations. You're now the biggest idiot on the New York Times editorial board. Well, we have one more minute left in this episode, this Christmas Eve episode. What was your gift what was the headline gift of the year for you? What gift that did the headlines give you? Was it Trump? Was that the biggest gift? And there's nothing else to talk about of this past year. What was the biggest gift and the biggest bag of coal? Well, there's two major gifts. Obviously, you had the Brexit gift. That oh, yeah. su supplied innumerable uh, views on YouTube. And then you had the Trump gift, which gave us that brilliant episode in front of the Jacob Javits Center. In, in, in front of the glass ceiling that was going to explode for Hillary Clinton's coronation as queen of the world that melted spectacularly uh, in, in a um, kind of Muammar Gaddafi-esque um, <laughs> violation on the hood of a car moment. Th 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 those were the greatest times of the year. Uh, the, the coal. So view counts, view counts. So what's the, what's the coal? What's the bag of coal in the last few seconds we have? Oh, I think the biggest lump of coal uh, would have to be um, there's no lump of coal. It's just been all great. <laughs> well, happy Christmas if you celebrate it, and uh, happy December 24th for those who don't. <laughs> happy Kwanzaa. Merry Christmas. Shalom. As Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Until next time. Bye, y'all.